Uh, today's gonna be incredible, guys. As we, as you know, we've been doing the the Acts series. Uh, last week, or last last weekend, we ended in uh, Acts 17, and we're gonna we're, we're gonna skim through uh, Acts chapter 18 today. Uh, and, and just to to kind of kind of give you some background of what's going on, and so we can pick it up uh, in our service. Come on, bro. Of where I'm gonna be preaching. Amen. Amen. Uh, so just, just kind of listen. It says, Paul starts the corn church with him and Priscilla and Aquila. Solid, ch solid church because they started with a solid uh, base of disciples. Yeah. Aquila and, and Priscilla left Rome when Claudius expelled the Jews because of the argument over Christus. Mm -hmm. This happened in 49 AD. Of course, we remember earlier that year, Paul traveled to Thessalonica after receiving the Macedonian call and trust, come over to Macedonia and help us. Acts 16, verse 6 through 10. After three weeks of preaching the word, persecution became so intense that the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea in the middle of the night. And we all know that scripture, right? Amen. This is after the beating Paul and Silas received in Philippi and the conversion of the Philippian jailer, Acts chapter 16. Persecution for the Thessalonians from, from Thessalonica followed Paul and Paul to Berea and was so severe that the disciples escorted Paul to Athens, leaving Silas and Timothy in Berea. After preaching in Athens for a short time, Paul converted Dionysus and Demarius, along with some of the others, Acts 17, verse 34. He then travels to Corinth, saw, and, and, and that's where he's working full time. He's, he, he's, uh, he's building, he's a tent maker, he's a carpenter. He, he, he's building tents yeah. full time, and then every, every Sabbath he would go to the synagogue and preach the word. That's right. And it was incredible because then Silas and Timothy come and meet up with him to be able to relieve him. So now, now it's Silas and Timothy that are, that are being tent makers and that are making the money to be able to provide uh, the, the, the finances for, for Paul to be able to preach the word full time. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. uh, and, and we learned that from 2 Corinthians 11, 8 and 9, Philippians chapter 4. 14 through 19. And it's about this time in 51 AD where Paul, Silas, and Timothy write the epistle that we know of Thessalonians. Uh, uh, of Thessalonians. The, uh, this is a very young church. Again, Paul was only there for three weeks. Uh, he could only be there for three weeks because the persecution was so bad. And we're going to pick it up in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. The title of the lesson this morning is Against All Odds. And it truly was against all odds. Everywhere Paul would go, there was always persecution. Why? Because he was preaching the word of God. That's right. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, in the verse 1, and it's kind of cool. This was like just a little insight that I got when I was uh, going over this, 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 this lesson. But I didn't, I didn't know it was Paul, Silas, and Timothy that all kind of had to do with writing 1 Thessalonians, which I thought was really cool. Awesome. But Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, in your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because the gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And I, I love that. You know, when we read Acts 17, uh, one, 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 uh, 1 through 10, now the Bereans were more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness. But yet we learn right here that the Thessalonians were just as fired up. Mm -hmm. Like, like the, the, it says that, that these guys became imitators of us and of Christ Jesus. And I thought that was really cool as well. Verse 7. It says, and so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. 
The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the coming wrath. Yeah. And from this passage, we get our three points. Okay. Point number one. Camera. Work produced by faith. Okay. Point number two. Labor prompted by love. Come on. Come on. And point number three. Endurance inspired by hope. And, and, and I, I love this book because the Thessalonians were such great imitators. These guys only had Paul for three weeks, but yet they were like a spiritual sponge. They, tried, they, they, they soaked up as much as they could. I got to ask you, are you an imitator of the person that God has put in your life? Yeah. I believe God, God, God is so perfect. He's so He's all knowing. He He knows exactly what every single one of us needs, yeah. and He puts the right people in our life so that we can learn, so that we can imitate something in them. And sometimes we don't like it. Amen. Sometimes we're like, God, why did you put this person in my life? And, and it's usually because it's it, they're doing something that you're lacking. Yeah, and it's so convicting, guys. Oh, it's convicting. I know for me personally, uh, these last eight months, it's been so convicting. It's been so hard to really submit myself to Colton. Because he's such a hard worker. He's always doing something with the ministry. He's always like, just like making a bulletin or writing a lesson or like something with missions and like working numbers and like following up in Bible studies, and somehow he still goes to the swimming pool with his little daughter. He has a little uh, daughter-father day, or daughter-daddy day. Yeah. But he makes it happen. He's such yeah. a hard worker. And I believe God has put him in my life so I can imitate that. Yeah. Come on, babe. But i got to ask you, how long does it take you to really submit yourself to the person that is discipling you? You know, something that we believe in the church is discipling. And teach them to obey. Yeah. See, we believe in, and not just sharing scripture, but we believe in, in really um, calling people to obedience. Calling people to the scriptures. Calling them to change their life. And, and, and just, like the, just like we learned from these Thessalonians, that they, they had that very heart. To be able to imitate <coughs> Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I want to read uh, uh, just a couple definitions. Uh, 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 so you can have a, uh, a conviction of the difference between a conviction and an, uh, an opinion. You know, it says that, that, that you receive the message with deep conviction. That's um, right. With the Holy Spirit and with power. But I think what, what can happen sometimes is, is we study the Bible, we become disciples, we're fired up, we're excited, and then we no longer have like a deep conviction about the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. maybe it applies to my life. Mm -hmm. To where before you saw it, it just cut you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? We, we have the power to either allow the word of God to cut our hearts or not. Yeah. Like e e e either the word of God, we, we can let the word of God cut the sin out of our lives. Or we can just hold the doctor's hand away. Like, no, you are not coming close to my heart. And, and that's what we do. When, 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 we, when we don't follow disciples, when we don't follow the scriptures. But the difference is, is, this is opinion. When someone says they have an opinion on a matter, we tend to think there was little, if any, research that went into forming their viewpoint. Opinion has subjectivity and personal taste 
written all over it, kind of like the, the, the whole Superman right there, <laughs> the welcome. You know, Matt, he, 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 he believes, he's, this is, he's strong on this. He, like, you're not going to be able to persuade him otherwise. But other people are like, no, dude, Superman. Like, he's the one that, 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 that is, the, is the number one. He's got to be top number one out of the top You tell five. him, bro. <laughs> And then, let's look at conviction. Wait up, bro. Conviction, on the other hand, connotes a much stronger <laughs> epistemic, ep- epistemic viewpoint. Mm. When we hear someone say their conviction is X, it's true, we tend to think there was at least a fair amount of research mm. that was instrumental in forming the conclusion. That's usually someone that like is like, no, dude, this is it. I've done the research. I, I've done the numbers. This, this is right. You usually like, whoa, like this guy really believes this. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when 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 you when you first study the Bible and people are like, dude, you need to study the Bible with me. Yeah. Check out these scriptures. This right. is not just my opinion. This is the word of God. Yeah. And that's exactly what Paul, Silas, and Timothy did here with with the disciples. They had conviction. But I gotta ask you: Do you have conviction in the things that you believe? You know, we have the five core convictions of the church. Come on, come on. Who can name all five? Damn. Probably a handful of us. Yes. Which is awesome. But I, I think every single one of us ha- should be able to 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 quote and, and, and be able to know the five core convictions. Yeah. Number one. These are the five core convictions. We believe in world evangelism. We believe in going and making disciples of all nations. Like, look around. There's white, black, Filipino, Asian, Mexican, uh, Lebanese. What what, what other ethnicities do we have out there? Kazakhstan, El Salvador, uh, Brazil, Native American. We have everything because we believe in world events. We believe in going to all nations. That's right. We're not just a New Testament church. We're a whole Bible church. Amen. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, we, we, we go by the New Testament. Well, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says all scripture is God be that is useful. Amen. So we believe in the whole Bible. We believe in central leadership. We believe that, that God has always used someone yeah. to direct his people. Yeah. Just like Moses directed, just like Joshua, and, and just like these different guys, Gideon, all these different guys that really led God's people. Come on, bro. We believe in, 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 in being silent where the Bible speaks and speak where the Bible is silent. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, nowhere in the Bible does it say that you have to come to church at 10 a.m. Yeah, right. That's, that's just something, like, it's not against the Bible, uh, and, and it doesn't say to not meet at 10 a.m. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, a lot of churches have a cross on their church. Mm-hmm. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, hey, put a cross on, on, on your church. It's, yeah. it's custom. It's, and it doesn't say, it's not against it. So it's in, your, it's in your freedom, it's in your godly freedom to be able to do these things. Does that yeah. make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I know for a long time, I didn't really understand that, and then I, I, I really started understanding it, amen? <laughs> and then number five, and that's what we're mostly going to talk about today, is discipling partners. Oh, yeah. and, and we really believe in, in really, the world calls it mentorship, people call it, oh, this is my mentor, uh, and, and Jesus was the ultimate mentor, and, and he really uh, implemented this in Matthew 28, um, verse 20, yeah. and teaching them to obey. Everything. Everything, exactly. And, and not just teaching them, um, but really expecting an obedience, really expecting them to, to, to really change. Um, again, I think it, it, it was, it's so cool to see here the, the, the church in Thessalonica be led by the Spirit. Like the, 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 This young church was willing to imitate people who they only knew for three weeks. Well, how about you? How long does it take you to really submit to the person that God has put in your life? How long does it take for you to really trust the person that God has put in your life to know that, hey, 
God has put that person in your life to help you. God has put that person in your life to, to encourage you. Come on. To spur you on, Come on. towards love and good deeds. <coughs> well. Come on, bro. I know for me, guys, it, it's, it's been so encouraging. Uh, just to see how God has really changed my heart over this last month. Um, I, I never, I never realized how prideful I was um, until I, I moved here to the OC. When, when, when God had put someone in my life that that I know I needed to imitate, but I didn't. And and ever since I, I really submitted myself to Colton, ever since I, I really started giving my heart to Colton, my life has been like so much more productive. It's been so much more righteous. It's been so much more encouraging, uh, not just for me, but for the ministry. And it's just been encouraging to see just all the disciples working on campus, getting in Bible studies. Like, our fun time is tagging, you know, because we're just all week. We're, we're in Bible studies. We're in homework. We're, you know, we're, it's just nonstop. So it's like, yeah, let's go tagging. Let's yeah. go tagging. And uh, again, that's been really cool. Uh, very proud of uh, the group, the four, the, the fantastic four that, that went out yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they all made what fifty two dollars yeah. in like an hour and a half each. So that, that's really awesome. Yeah. So don't sleep on the Saturdays, guys. You can make money. <laughs> okay. But again, uh, it, it, when, when we decide to imitate, when we decide to, to really go after uh, the person that, that, that God has put in our life, I guarantee you guys, you're, you're going to have so much more peace in your life. Yeah. You're going to feel so much better going and getting advice and getting help. Because you trust that person. You now know that that person has the best interest for you. Yeah. But imitate, imitation's funny. I, imitation uh, is... is uh, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, when, when, I, when I think of imitating, I, I can't help but think of like Colton. Oh, when he used to have his long hair, oh, you know? Man. It's just... <sighs> <laughs> you know, or... or, or uh, uh, you know, he, he, he'd do this. Yeah, all the time. And somehow he, he like, he puts his leg back. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Well, that's how he does. Oh, bro. Leg comes back. It's all imitation, right? It's like, they imitated someone who imitated someone. And ultimately, we imitated Jesus. Amen. Who knows how Jesus preached? <laughs> right, like, God. <laughs> you know, and then, and then you got, like, you know, just kind of impersonation. That's... I, I, I thought that was in but not really. <laughs> so I can't really share about that. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, another thing that, that, that really encourages me from just this chapter, in chapter one, is how the Lord's message rang out through all of Macedonia and Achaia. Yeah. Just this young, you can even call it a baby Christian church. They literally, like, all three of their leaders, like, got up and they had to go. <laughs> so they were, like, uh, like kind of like the campus service uh, when the marriage was out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But I know what you guys did. You guys had two baptisms and you guys had an amazing service. Amen. And, and I believe that, that we are really this church. That's awesome. The Thessalonian church. Come on, bro. Where, where, where if all the leaders were to go, the word is still going to be preached. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's incredible because we're, we're putting the scripture into practice. And, and I really have a challenge for us all. Amen? Yeah. I really want to call you guys to greatness. I think we have our Bring Your Neighbor Day in two weeks. Yeah. And you're probably like, oh, that's 14 days away, man. Like, why are you talking about this already? <laughs> Well, let me ask you something. Did you have a visitor at our last Bring Your Neighbor Day? Amen. Mm. And it's usually like, oh, I didn't because, you know, I invited a lot of people, but they flagged. Well, guess what? You have 14 days to get <laughs> solid oh, yeah. commitments. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, my wife and I, we, we, we got our whole complex. Like, we got persecution, we got phone calls like, hey, you do this one more time, we're going to call the police. And so, our complex is evangelized. So now we got to go to a new place and share. <laughs> but what about you? What, what can you do? You know, I, I was sharing with the group early in the morning, 
have some godly competition. Mm. You know, 50 for the Lord, 100 for the Lord, sharing your faith with 50, 100 people a day. Maybe you race somebody. Hey, bro, I bet you that I can share with 50 people before you. Sis, I bet I can share with 100 people before you. Oh, baby. It's going to get hot. But, but I, I believe by us doing this, by, by us really going after these goals and, and, and really making sure that we have an incredible Bring Your Neighbor Day, it's going to start today. It's going to start yeah. tomorrow. It's going to start in our quiet times. Because I want to see the most amazing Bring Your Neighbor Day yeah. on October 22nd. Amen? Come on. Amen. I believe that every single one of you guys can have a personal guest out. Yes. Yeah, it's not that hard. Like, hey, hey, I want to invite you out. Hey, right after, I want to take you out to, oh, I'm there. Boom. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. You, you get people with food. That's how they got me. <laughs> you know? Like, you, you'll, be, you'll be shocked of how many people you can get by just inviting them out to lunch. And really just being a friend. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Um, let's go to chapter two. Come on, bro. Come on, awesome. My second point, labor prompted by love. Let's go, Gordo. Let's go, bro. It says, you know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, we dare to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up grief. God is our witness. We are not looking for praise from men, not from you or anyone else. I gotta ask you, why do you do what you do? Mm. Why do you share your faith? Why do you read your Bible every day? Why, why, why do you get into Bible study? Is it, is it so you can look good and you can kind of check it out? Oh, I was in a Bible study last week. Mm. I'm gonna go back to my regular life. Or, 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 or is it because you want to please God? Come on, bro. I think we can very easily get caught up in just, I need to get in Bible studies. And then, and, then, and then we forget why we're doing this. Yep. Right. It's because of love. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I love, I love what, what, what Paul shares here. He says, we're not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. That's awesome. And, 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 and the this, this scripture really hit me um, last week when, when uh, someone decided uh, they no longer wanted to study the Bible. And we would we were study, staying up to like 12 30, mm -hmm. 1 in the morning, like multiple nights a week, uh, studying the Bible with this guy. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then, and then it's time to really count the cost to see if he wants to be a disciple because we don't just baptize anybody. They need to be made into a disciple. They want they gotta know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. And he counted the cost, he's like, dude, I, I, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. And it just hit my heart. I was like, oh dude, like why not? Like mm -hmm. This is the best thing you can do. Yeah. Like, this isn't just your salvation. This is now the salvation of those that you know. Mm. Yeah, wow. And it really, it really hurt my heart. I was like, man, dude, like, so many people we give our whole hearts to, um, and then they decide not to, to, to make the decision to, to, to be a disciple. Yeah. And then that's when, that's when our hearts get tested. Mm -hmm. That's like, okay, are you going to do this again? Are you going to keep sharing your faith? Are you going to keep studying the Bible with people because you love me, God? Or are you going to stop giving your heart because you didn't, you didn't get what you wanted? Right. And, and that really challenged us. I said, wow, man, like, I, I got discouraged on Monday. I was like, man, like, this guy was so close. I invested. I gave my whole heart to him. I shared everything. I shared my life with this person. And then for him to, to not make the decision, it's, it's, it's a little dagger, it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's incredible because I was reminded with the scripture that I'm not doing this for Colton. I'm not doing this for Tim. I'm not doing this for my wife. Mm. 
I studied the Bible with people because of God, because I want to please God. Come on, bro. Yeah. I, I, I want to make more disciples because I want to love God. I want people to have what I have. Right. And that's peace. And that's that's there joy. That's salvation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why we got to do what we got to do. But yet God will put people in your lives where you give your whole heart and then they don't make it to test your heart. Yeah. You say, wait, why are you doing this? You, do you, you, is this what's going to keep you faithful? Is just baptizing people or is it because you have a relationship with me mm-hmm. and God will do that over and over and God's done that over and over yeah. but when, when people decide to stop studying the Bible or, or don't want to be a disciple you just keep preaching the word amen, yeah. amen. amen. you keep preaching the word um, let's keep going come on everybody come on bro Preach it, bro. In the middle of verse six, it says, "As an apostle of Christ, we could have been, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you have become so dear to us." And and, and I, I love this scripture because here. You know, you, you always hear Paul, like, he's very intense, like, through, you know, obviously reading all the epistles, like, he, he loves the church, he's always praying for the church, um, but I, I love right here, he says, I, like a mother caring for her little children, sorry, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children, and, and, and the heart here that Paul had was, man, I just, I just want to take care of the disciples. I want to take care of the brothers and sisters. Come on, bro. And, 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 and you know, I, I think of a mother, and, and I, I think of my mom. Like, she, she's just serving. She, yeah. she wants the best for me. She, she, she wants to make sure I'm eating. She wants to make sure, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, no, eat more. Oh, yeah. Like, you're fine. Yep. Like, keep eating. Like, I don't know what Come it on. is. <laughs> but, but mothers really care. They, they, they want the very best for their children. They can do the worst thing, but they still love their son. They still love their daughter. And it's incredible because th- there's something that we can learn here as disciples. That this is how we need to love one another. We, 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 need to, we need to have that same care uh, for those that we disciple, for those that are under us. And then it goes to say more. It says, we love you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a deep conviction about this, guys. I, I, I think, I don't, I don't ever want us to become a church that just becomes just about numbers. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that that just, be, just becomes about baptism yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I, I want us to, to be a church where we don't just share the gospel, but we share our lives as well. Come on, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, two, two, two men that I think about uh, when I think of this scripture is Francisco and Martin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, these guys will share their life with you. Mm-hmm. It, it was incredible. One Saturday morning, I helped uh, uh, Francisco. We were cleaning out his garage. And <laughs> we, we went and had breakfast, and we were just talking the whole time, Hello. listening to <laughs> Mexican music and, you know, wiping down stuff. But we were just getting to know one another, you know? And I've only, I've only known them for, what, less than four months, five months? But, yeah, I feel like I've known him forever. Come on, bro. You know, I feel like he's like one of my deal, you know? Like, you know, my Pancho. Pancho. You know? <laughs> because because <laughs> we, we don't just share the Bible, but we share our lives as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I believe the, the thing that's really going to help people come into God's kingdom yeah. is our love. Yeah. We learned that from John 13, 34, and 35, yeah. that the world's going to know that we're disciples by our love. Yeah. Right. And people see right through, like, oh, let's get a, let's do a Bible study. Let's do a Bible study. No, how about like let, let's get together, sh- share your life story with me. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the hardest things that you've had to go through? Where Come are you on. from? And, and I believe that's going to go so much more further. Yes, the Bible studies are very important, and, and that's gonna that's gonna be a byproduct, and, and they need to be saved. But it, it, it's so important that that we're 
we're in we're in the people's lives. We're yeah. we're, we're in each other's lives. So I, I think even for us uh, as disciples, it can get very superficial. Like, all right, let's have tea time. Okay, how you doing? Good, good. Right. Confess your sin. I'll confess mine. Okay, love you, bro. Love you, sis. Have a good week. Oh Stay gosh. strong. Yeah. But really, that's what can happen, that's guys, yeah. in, in our discipling relationships. It's yeah. just kind of a a, ch- a, a to do list. Mm-hmm. But I want to help you fight to have an amazing uh, relationship, just like Paul had an amazing relationship here with the disciples in Thessalonica. Mm-hmm. Well, well. I have some practicals here for you. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, lay it up. Do good. Thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's so important as we share the gospel with our friends and family that it's not just Bible study, Bible study, but that we learn our lives as well. Mm-hmm. We will be able to win the hearts of men and women if we care about... It, it, we won't be able to win the hearts of men and women if all we care about is baptisms and being personally truthful. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yet those are, those are important and will come, but you must share your life as well. Um, some things that you can do when you're studying the Bible with someone or someone that maybe you're thinking about, like, man, my, my, my relationship with my disciple isn't that good. Well, let, let me give you some ideas that you can do. You can go work out together. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I know, I don't know about you, but I got a couple of Levi's to, to, to lose. Amen? Come on, bro. You got a couple of pounds to, to, to shed. I'm going to go lose. Go and have a, a good lunch together. Go, 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 go grocery shopping. Go, go watch the movie Hits. If you want to bond, you know? Like, I, I heard the, the brothers uh, went and watched it. They were, like, clinging on to each other. Like, <laughs> But go pray together. Go hiking. Um, uh, share your life stories. Buy them a Bible. Like these are all things that you can do. Yes, for your discipler and, and for the person that disciples you. But this is also some things that you can do for those that are studying the Bible. Yeah. The, those those that that, that, that that you've met on campus. Like hey, when, when can we get together? I met this. Uh, he's a, a a track athlete. Uh, his name is Sam, and we're going to be getting together on Monday and just sharing our, our, our testimonies. Like, hey, share your life. Well, where are you from? Well, what do you like? And, and and things like that are going to go so much more further uh, than just Bible study, Bible study, Bible study. We, we must learn, uh, guys, to be listeners. I, I, think, I think one of the scriptures that comes to mind is, is, is slow to speak. I think we, we, we got to be great listeners. When, when we're studying the Bible with people, when, when we're getting together uh, with our discipling partners, uh, that, that we really make sure that, that, that we're doing everything possible. Uh, verse 11, of chapter 2. Come on, bro. Go, Greg. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. This is incredible because now we see the other side of Paul, uh, of being a father, being a father in the faith. i got to ask you, do you have a father in the faith? Do you have a mother in the faith? You know, when I, when I think of a father, I, I think of someone who is encouraging. Yeah. He's a little tougher on you, a little bit harder on you, but just wants the best for you. Um, they believe in you. They inspire you. Um, I encourage you guys all look, watch the movie Greater. Um, it's it's an incredible, incredible story of this walk on uh, football player at uh, Arkansas. Amazing movie. But his his older brother, uh, his his dad was an alcoholic, but his older brother was really his father figure. Yeah. who was there to inspire him, to encourage him, to believe in him, to push him, uh, to train him, uh, to help him. And, and, and I believe that, um, that we need those, those people in our lives as well. We need, we need spiritual fathers and, and mothers to be in our lives to help us, to encourage us. Guys, I recently found out that I'm a words of affirmations guy. Really? No. The, the, I, I actually need uh, to hear like, yeah, yeah, bro, you're good job. Come on, 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 
Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Good job, bro. Good job. It sounds a little like sissy, but. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's the truth. Come on, bro. 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 Come on, bro.
uh, that I've been able to, to help convert and, and really help is Ricky Chalinor. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I've known Ricky since uh, seventh grade. Wow. And uh, it goes back to me being a bully and asking him for his homework. And, <laughs> you know, and we weren't even friends. Uh, but later we, we did become friends. We ended up playing uh, football together. And I wanted to take a buddy picture with him because I didn't have money to... To, uh, to take pictures, so I was hoping to get a picture with him. That didn't work. And that's what, that's the beginning of our, of our friendship. <laughs> I think of Chris Martin in the East region. Let's go, Chris. Uh, just yeah. such a zealous guy. Mm -hmm. Someone who, who, who truly just, all he wants to do is bring as many people as, as possible to the kingdom of God. Awesome. I think of Ivan Soto. Uh, I, I met him in, in the summer of 2015. He got baptized at the 2015 uh, GLC. And uh, man, this, this guy's just my partner because, uh, you know, his, his background was homosexuality. And, and, and to see a young man uh, change his life because he, he was just so tired uh, of living that lifestyle. He felt so empty. He felt so dark. And to be able to see what the cross and what Jesus sacrificed, uh, and when he saw what, what the sacrifice and what Jesus did on the cross for him, allowed him to be able to change his life. And now he's getting ready to go to, uh, to the University of New Mexico, and he's going to be on the Albuquerque mission team. You know, I think of uh, Kevin True Hero. You know, that I can take Kevin, man. Come on, Kevin. This guy is uh, what do they call him? The Viper. The Viper. Because he can do anything. And he can strike at any moment. You know, if it's accounting, if it's uh, administration, if it's preaching, welcome, prayer, announce, whatever. He can do it all. Come on, Kevin. I think of uh, our, our very own uh, Cantrell Trent. Mr. Trent. You know, there, there's no one that sweats more than this one. <laughs> I know he's fired up about the winter time, man. man. <laughs> but he's still gonna be sweating when he's up here singing. But, Lord, but you know he's fired up when his head is shining. You know, because he just he just loves God. But he's on, become just a great best friend to me. We're, we had detail last week. I said, bro, I just want to let you know, like, you become one of my best friends here. Aww. He's like. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> it was like hard for him to say it, but he said it. It was awesome. Amen. I think I'm a uh, Sammy Herrera. He's learning how to upload all this stuff, and, and he's like, dude, I'm, I'm feeling stretched. But it's awesome because this guy's a different guy than he was. Yeah. Right? Come on, Sammy. Right? And, 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 and these, these are really my, 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 my crown. These are really my joy. Um, you know, I, I think of uh, Michael Hazroni. Michael! Oh, Michael! Man, this guy's been around for like eight months. He's been alive for two and a half. But it's it's so awesome, to, even for him, to to really learning what it means to be a disciple. Yes. Yeah. You know, he had a birthday party two weeks ago, and he's like, "No, I'm gonna put God first, and then right after church, I'm gonna go to the birthday party." What a guy! Oh. And, he's like, and, and little things like that that he's learning, you know, awesome. from, from the scriptures, and so it's just encouraging. It, it, you, you make me happy uh, when I see you. I'm so proud of you. And, and, and just making the decision to, to, to be a disciple. Yes. Um, but I can share about almost every single one of you guys. But we'll be here until about 12 o'clock. <laughs> but uh, l let's close out here. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. In First Thessalonians, chapter four, come on, 
Come on, bro. And in verse 9, it says, Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do all the more. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do it more and more. And I just want to talk about it again. Kingdom dating. Amen. Why? What is kingdom dating? What, what, what does that mean? Can't have enough. It's the best dates ever. I, I, I remember, uh, you know, I'd be working or before, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm going on this on this kingdom date. I'd be telling like my employees, they're like, what's a kingdom date? I'm like, oh, so. And I explained the whole thing. Like, I go, we meet up with another brother, and we, we go and pick up the sisters. We go out to a place to pray. We go to eat. We open the doors for them. We make them a card. We bring them a flower. Um, and brothers, I hope you're doing these things. Uh, and, 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 then, and, and then my employees, my, my employees, my like, well, like you don't like kiss her, or you don't like you guys don't hook up. I'm like, no. Whoa. That's not even close to the itinerary. But it, 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 it's so special what we have in the kingdom. Like you don't have to worry. You don't have to be insecure. You don't have to like, oh my gosh, does he think I'm pretty enough? Does he think I'm like no, that's garbage. That's so worldly. We do it differently in the kingdom of God, amen. amen. And and, and, I, and I pray and I expect that every one of you guys are going on kingdom dates. Because if you're not going on kingdom dates, the world wants to take you on a kingdom date. They, they want to take you out. And so it's so important that the, us as the brothers, amen, that, that we're taking the sisters. And the sisters too can Come take the sisters. brothers, amen. Uh, it has been very encouraging. Uh, I think it was on Thursday, there was like a... Like a a five-star restaurant at the brother's house or something. Oh, yeah. The candles and like the, the knife and the and the, the fork was all nice. And it's like, whoa! They had their bow ties and like took a little selfie. Uh, and that's your brother Cantrell and Rob right there. Yeah. 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 Come on, bro. Yeah. Loving that's our awesome. sisters more and more, amen? That's awesome. It's our job to protect them. Let's go down to verse 14. It says, We believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with his voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we and so we will be with you, Lord, forever. Therefore encourage encourage each other with these words. Come on, bro. Judgment is coming. <laughs> Jesus is coming back. <laughs> and, but we don't know when. <laughs> I gotta ask you, if Jesus were to come back right now, oh, baby. would you be meeting him in the air? <laughs> would you be meeting your maker? Come on. Would you be going to heaven today? You know, a hidden sin isn't worth eternity, guys. <laughs> Being open, opening up about your lives, figuring out what you need to change. It's not worth 80 years on this earth to hide. Eternity is forever. Try to fathom that. You can't. It's like forever? Yeah. Like forever, ever? Forever. <laughs> That's eternity. But I, I, I want to help you really paint a picture of what heaven's going to be like one day. Come on, bro. I think of the most beautiful rivers, the most beautiful oceans. This last August, I got to go to Hawaii, and I saw the most beautiful bay. It's like turquoise water. You didn't even really need goggles. You can see everything. It was so clear. Streets of gold. 
You know, I think of like Avatar, like everything you step on just like glows. Uh, everything has spirit. <coughs> no more pain. <coughs> no more tears. No more insecurity. No more faithlessness. No more doubts. No more diseases. No more natural disasters. No more mass shootings. Amen. Amen. This is what I think about when I think about heaven forever. And that inspires me to every day make sure I get open about my life. Because every day we blow it. The Bible says for, uh, no. help me out, please. All no. For all have fallen short, fall short of the glory of God. We all blow it every day. But the thing is, is what are you going to do when you do mess up? And, and I really honestly can say the only thing that's kept me faithful these last 12 years is just being open. Like there, there'll be times where I've really messed up. I've really blown it. And I was ready to leave God's church and no longer be a disciple. But I said, that is living on this earth say 40, 50, 60, 70 more years, and then dying and not being a faithful disciple is yeah. not worth eternity. Wow. You can have the most fun on this earth. You can have a blast. You can have unlimited money, but it's not worth eternity. My challenge, really, that I want to leave you guys with is to study the Bible. Come on. Is to get open. It is to really go after your discipling partners and really ask them, hey, what can I change? What do, what do you see in me that I need to change? And that's tough. Yep. Because you're probably going to hear something that you don't want to hear. Yep. Uh, but that's where you got to just let the word of God just get in your heart yeah, and just start cutting off and shaving off the sin. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to be so much more happier. You're going to be so much more faithful. You're going to be so much more excited about life. And I believe that, that if we really take on and really imitate this Thessalonian church, that everyone is going to hear about the life north sector in the north. I love you guys. To God be the glory.